Uh, we would like to uh, start the presentation for Building Systems uh, Business Unit. The presenter is uh, Hideaki Seki, Senior Vice President and Executive Officer, CEO of Building Systems Business Unit. Over to you, Mr. Seki. My name is Hideaki Aseki, as has been introduced, CEO of Building Systems Business Unit. Uh, I've become CEO in April. Up until uh, March, I was the CEO of Hitachi Automotive Systems, but I actually uh, did work uh, for a Building Systems Business Unit before uh, when I got started. So allow me to start my presentation without further ado. First, uh, I would like to provide an overview of the business that we conduct. Our revenue for 2017 uh, was uh, 603 billion yen. As you know, uh, we manufacture and sell E and D elevators and escalators. Uh, Japan, China, Middle East, uh, these are the regions that we mainly cover. So 69% of our business is sales and manufacturing of E and D elevators and escalators. And we provide maintenance after the sales. Uh, and we also provide building equipment uh, service, uh, security-related uh, business uh, based on uh, camera footage, as well as uh, HVAC or uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and lighting. And that uh, accounts for 31% building services. Uh, so we have END and uh, building equipment management uh, service. They are all uh, evolved into what we call smart building services. So. Uh, by leveraging uh, data from END and buildings, uh, we provide high value added uh, products and services uh, globally to our clients. That's the business that we do. So, uh, let us do a recap of uh, the performance in fiscal year 2017. Uh, revenue 603 billion. Compared to the year before FY16, we were able to have an increase in revenue. But what was unfortunate uh, was uh, the operating income ratio. Uh, it uh, went down quite substantially uh, in 2017 year on year. And that's because uh, of China's uh, slowing E&D new installation. Although our market share increased uh, because of intense competition, pricing went down. And we were also affected negatively by rising material costs. And thus, uh, profitability declined uh, for China and Japan. Uh, there was revenue uh, decrease uh, with withdrawal from low profit business, uh, such as uh, building management business. But E&D business remains robust. Asia, Middle East uh, saw expansion of uh, sales spaces, improved E&D orders received, and improved profitability. Uh, fiscal year 2018, uh, the Operating income ratio that has uh, declined uh, should be brought up again. That's uh, what we're going to do uh, in this fiscal year. So. A 9% uh, target for adjusted uh, operating income ratio, although revenue may uh, come down, uh, we would like to focus very much uh, on uh, the operating income ratio uh, so that uh, we will be posed for further growth going forward. That's the kind of year that we would like to have. Now, uh, compared uh, to fiscal year 17, what's going to happen in terms of revenue and operating income in fiscal year 18? Revenue. Uh, back in FI17, uh, we achieved uh, 603 billion, but competition became very intense. Uh, uh, selling prices dropped, and we were also affected by foreign exchange rates. So, with increase in unit installations uh, in China and expansion in Asia and Middle East, uh, uh, we will try to offset with these factors. So, our target, uh, however, for 18 is 580 billion. Uh, with respect to adjusted uh, operating income, uh, there will be selling prices uh, uh, dropping in China. Uh, but uh, uh, we would uh, like to achieve uh, a 9 percent operating income uh, ratio with cost reduction and unit installation in China and so forth. So uh, with drastic uh, cost uh, reduction and increased uh, orders received, uh, uh, we would like to offset against drop in selling prices in China and foreign exchange uh, uh, rates uh, so that we can see improvement in adjusted operating income ratio. 
and we are now in the process of uh, uh, formulating a uh, medium-term management plan uh, 2021. Let me explain the thinking behind this. Uh, this is about the trends regarding E&D new installation market compared to fiscal year 16 toward uh, fiscal year 21. Roughly 2% growth rate uh, can be expected from what we see. Uh, but as you can see from uh, the China part, uh, in fiscal year 17, uh, China accounts for 60%, very large, but the growth itself uh, has uh, stabilized. So China has entered uh, the uh, stability phase, stable phase. And uh, what's going to grow is Asia and Middle East. In Asia and Middle East, new installation demand will grow, and China growth will uh, slow, but it will uh, become more mature. And so we would like to uh, further stabilize uh, our business in China. Uh, uh, what we have uh, yet to capture, uh, which is uh, maintenance. Uh, that's what we would like to focus on. Uh, Japan, uh, new installation demand uh, gradually uh, decreasing, but uh, there's uh, quite robust modernization demand. So we would like to increase our presence in modernization business. And this is uh, our uh, competition uh, strategy. Uh, vertically, uh, the rate of revenue, horizontally operating income ratio. This is something that we showed you the year before. And uh, this is a plot comparing Hitachi against five peers in the industry. In the past uh, five years, we were able to successfully capture growth in China. As uh, a result, uh, in terms of growth in revenue, we have been able to achieve a very high growth uh, in revenue on par with our peers. But when it comes to operating income ratio, it's still hovering quite low. So in fiscal year 2018, operating income ratio shall be raised. Uh, that's what we're going to work on. Work on. And uh, key strategies going forward are such uh, that in Japan, uh, for both E&D and building uh, equipment uh, management, uh, so data leveraging uh, maintenance, so we have that system in place already. So by leveraging uh, data that we can collect, uh, uh, we would uh, like to offer this service not just to Japan, but to overseas on a global basis. Asia, we're going to focus on. And of course, uh, uh, we would like uh, to try to expand our business in view of uh, potential m and opportunities around the world. So Asia, Middle East, uh, uh, new installation demand, uh, uh, China, building service uh, business, uh, uh, E&D maintenance in Japan, global mother function uh, to be leveraged, uh, promote development of building service uh, utilizing data. And this is the growth uh, strategy that we are formulating toward 2021 uh, between 17 and 21 organically. Uh, we would like to raise our revenue by 60 billion organically. And on the overseas side, 60 billion, uh, China, Asia, in particular China, maintenance will be focused on, and Asia, Middle East, uh, we would like to capture NI demand, new installation demand. In terms of improving profitability uh, to expand building service uh, business, uh, data utilizing maintenance business, and uh, we have Vivale, uh, we have uh, uh, building maintenance uh, a system, and uh, by leveraging that, we would like to drive uh, profitability. So, expand business and improve profitability by accelerating overseas promotion of high value added uh, building service business utilizing data. That's what we would like to pursue. So, uh, let me give you the specifics as to each individual business uh, strategy. First, uh, this diagram uh, is uh, the trend uh, that surrounds our building uh, business and the opportunities in terms of uh, trends, aging society, digitization, urbanization, globalization, climate change. These are the trends we recognize uh, within our sphere. And there are business opportunities associated uh, with them. E&D, um, building uh, management uh, service, uh, we're going to dry those services that we conduct. Our thinking is such that uh, in urban space, including uh, building, we would like to offer security, comfort, reduce environmental load. And that's the kind of products and services we would like to provide. And by so doing, contribute uh, to sustainable uh, cities. Uh, uh, in terms of SDGs, uh, goal 11, uh, we would like to expand our business uh, in line with goal 11. And uh, the main strategy of ours is described here in Japan, E&D, and building and facility management uh, a service. They're all connected to our service, uh, service and so we can leverage uh, data collected. And 
the MADA IoT platform that Hitachi has uh, can be connected to that uh, to promote uh, remote uh, monitoring. AI and robotics will be utilized uh, to supplement labor shortage with uh, service robots, analyze visitor information, uh, to increase facility value, realize comfortable and uh, efficient mobile environment, and optimize electricity uh, consumption. These are uh, the variety of services we would uh, like to offer. So building uh, services, uh, leveraging uh, detailed uh, data, that's the kind of business unit we will become. So business unconnected with data, we will not be doing uh, such a business. I would like to explain our business uh, by region. First, uh, on China, take a look at year-on-year uh, -year growth, real GDP construction investments uh, that are being maintained uh, given that. Well, I said uh, 500,000 uh, uh, units, that's uh, uh, the level that uh, the market will stabilize. And the reason can be explained from this uh, graph. Uh, government policies of China uh, include new urbanization plan, China Manufacturing 2025, Belt and Road Initiative. But growth is dulling in China. So cost structure reform must be accelerated so that we can raise our profitability in the Chinese market. And this year, Rather than focusing on expansion of revenue, we would like to uh, gain high quality orders uh, so that we can uh, increase profitability. Every year, 70,000 units of ENDs uh, are offered in the China market every year. It's been 20 to 25 years uh, uh, since we started a business, and uh, there are uh, still being uh, operated, uh, meaning that there will be modernization demand uh, to rise. Uh, uh, when it comes to maintenance uh, service in China, it requires uh, such uh, personnel, human resources. And because there was uh, such a tight demand for new installations, we have not focused very much on maintenance service. But then uh, we believe that going forward, there will be a potential in maintenance uh, service. And so we would like to expand the e maintenance business in China. Uh, what to be realized uh, in China, uh, Vivale, uh, something that we already do in Japan, that is something that uh, uh, we would uh, uh, like to start in China as well. Now, uh, this is about uh, cost uh, structure reform as part of our overall effort in China. Of course, uh, the material cost uh, weighs highest uh, in the cost structure of E&E. And because of rising material costs, uh, we're suffering in terms of profitability. And uh, uh, we are reviewing suppliers, uh, procurement, and uh, we're now promoting joint and centralized uh, purchasing. And by so doing, joint centralized purchase ratio uh, will be brought from 55% to 69% uh, this year. With respect to manufacturing, uh, by using manufacturing execution system, MES, uh, we're able to log everything, all the data. And so that will be utilized for work analysis uh, system, a video linkage uh, system, a working uh, video linkage. These were introduced in set of works. And uh, we would like to uh, expand this uh, into Chengdu factory, the largest, uh, uh, and uh, other manufacturing sites as well. So offset impacts from price competition and increases in material costs by cost structure reform through the value chain. And there's another uh, part in our strategy. Uh, I said that China growth is uh, stabilizing, meaning that uh, uh, there will be some leeway uh, room uh, in the manufacturing sites in China. Uh, we would like to utilize that effectively. Uh, we have a very powerful uh, sales uh, network in China. And because of uh, One Belt, One Road initiative, uh, many of our clients in China are expanding overseas themselves. Uh, in the last uh, two years, uh, they have gone to uh, Malaysia, Cambodia. These are some examples of our clients going overseas. We have enabled uh, to receive orders uh, uh, in these countries that they have gone to. And we have also standardized components uh, to raise uh, uh, competitiveness. Um, now, I would like to explain about our service business. Now, conventionally, uh, we focus on responding uh, to E&D, new installation demand. Uh, take a look at this. Uh, 
a diagram Hitachi and the units in operation. As you can see, only 40% of the contracts we have with the clients uh, are pay for maintenance. And the rest, uh, we don't have any maintenance contract with our contracts in China. Conversely put, uh, we believe that there's growth potential uh, to be captured if we are to introduce maintenance contracts. Well, according to China regulation, we have to dispatch people at least uh, twice every month. So even though there's a maintenance uh, contract with some co clients, uh, we have not been able to raise profitability from our business all that much. But we are talking with government. Uh, officials in China. And of course, China uh, will uh, face uh, labor shortage. And uh, when it comes to maintenance of E&D and building equipment, it's better uh, to use machinery rather than uh, humans. And uh, uh, we are getting uh, traction and support. Uh, trials are being conducted uh, uh, to use machinery for maintenance uh, in some uh, sites. And uh, once they're successful, it could spread very quickly. Sufficient so differentiated maintenance by introducing E&D remote monitoring service. Uh, that's what we will pursue. And uh, Vivare. Uh, remote monitoring system uh, for building equipment. Uh, this will be brought from Japan to China. So with these uh, services, uh, we would uh, like to expand our business uh, and raise profitability. Now on Asia, take a look at Asia, if you could. Five to seven percent growth. Uh, so the growth uh, is robust within range uh, between 5 to 7 percent, rapid urbanization and uh, accelerating soft infrastructure, social infrastructure development. So uh, we will drive our new installation uh, business. Now, India, which accounts for more than 50 percent of uh, uh, the market in this uh, region, uh, more than 10 years ago, we reinforced our uh, front uh, office and expanded uh, services. Uh, but we have yet to establish a factory in India. So we would like to accelerate our efforts uh, to set up a factory in India. In Singapore, uh, uh, where our market is uh, matured, uh, renewal modernization demand uh, will arise. Uh, so there uh, we will be driving uh, data utilizing maintenance uh, service. Now, this uh, slide uh, shows our concept of how we're going to supply in the Asian region. Four factories, four plants in uh, China plus a uh, plant in uh, Thailand uh, will be brought to bear. And Japan serves as uh, the global mother uh, function. And with these, uh, 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 we will be uh, covering uh, China, India, and Middle East uh, uh, to bring our manufacturing capability to bear. And in the last uh, four years, uh, our sales uh, network, uh, maintenance, and uh, construction network uh, 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 the uh, front uh, functions uh, uh, have been reinforced. So in the next uh, few years come, we're going to harvest the fruits of such efforts made in the last few years. And this is about our product uh, strategy. First on elevators. China made a model uh, will be launched uh, in FY18. And we're going to deploy a global unified model. The thinking behind this uh, is thorough standardization and uh, utilization of resources in China. On escalators, uh, last year already we launched a global unified uh, uh, model. And for components, uh, by having modular design, increased local procurement uh, ratio, uh, we're going to uh, raise E and D NI demand uh, uh, up 83% uh, compared to 2016. And uh, remote monitoring uh, service will be established more firmly uh, in Singapore, Thailand, and uh, India. Trial services have started. And we would like uh, to have full fledged uh, service in 2019 and expand it from there to elsewhere. And uh, we would like to provide maintenance uh, to other manufacturers' elevators. Uh, Temple Lifts, uh, who has uh, uh, 5,000 uh, clients, uh, we uh, we're going to acquire that know-how. And of course, uh, know-how from Temple cannot be transplanted uh, right away. So we would like to customize it, design it, uh, uh, utilize the know-how that they have so that we can provide uh, maintenance uh, to other manufacturers elevators. Now, this is about Japan business. Japan business is not set to grow all that much, uh, certainly, but uh, uh, it's important in terms of uh, product uh, development and development of uh, services. So develop cutting edge uh, technology products and services and realize efficient business operation led by Japan. 
So remote monitoring uh, for E&D and buildings, uh, the service model leveraging that, uh, and traffic uh, analysis, uh, uh, business flow analysis, uh, such uh, new areas have arisen. And by using uh, Lumada, we would like to offer these new services. Uh, uh, to improve customer service, uh, solve labor a shortage, improve uh, facility value, uh, provide a comfortable, efficient mobility, optimize electricity consumption, and so forth. Robotics in recent uh, times uh, are being uh, deployed uh, in airports and other facilities. With a tablet alone, for example, in an airport, if you want to guide uh, uh, traffic to gates, it's going to be difficult. But um, if uh, Hitachi systems can be combined uh, with robotics plus our E and D, uh, we will be able to provide uh, full uh, guidance uh, to people visiting uh, airports uh, uh, between different facilities within the airport. And uh, the second part of Japan's business, Japan is now focusing on modernization business. As you can see from this uh, graph, uh, modernization demand is uh, going to steadily grow. Now, elevators 25 years uh, old or older, uh, that's what's uh, shown on this uh, plot. Uh, 31,500 uh, units, uh, which are 25 years old or older, and uh, uh, that will continue to arise uh, going forward. And in order to meet meticulous uh, demand in one, two, three years, uh, uh, we complete modernization. We have a very detailed uh, menu, a variety of menu that we can offer to our clients. And the service model developed in Japan can be offered uh, to Singapore and China when modernization demand rises. Uh, and development of world's fastest uh, 1260 meter per uh, minute elevator uh, will be globally deployed. Uh, and in the Guinness Book, it will be recorded as the fastest once it's launched. And of course, we will support productivity improvement efforts in Chinese factories using IoT technology. Now, uh, this is about cost strategy and uh, cash generation to be strengthened. Unfortunately, in FI17, gross uh, margin went down because uh, of uh, the cost with respect to SG&A and gross uh, profit margin. With these measures in place, we would like to improve uh, these numbers in terms of cash. Uh, in fiscal year 2017, it was 42.6, uh, and uh, with these measures in place, uh, we would like to maintain the CCC uh, at the same level in fiscal year 18. So profitability uh, that dropped in fiscal year 17, it will be brought back to 9% uh, this year. That's what this year is going to be. And uh, with that alone, we will not be able to po be poised for growth in the future. So uh, we will uh, try to achieve orders received, uh, 600. A billion. And the last uh, slide. Uh, we would like to achieve uh, growth higher uh, than market trends. Uh, market 1.2 percent. Our target uh, toward 2021 uh, is to have CAGR revenue over 5 percent. So Middle East uh, and Asia, uh, we're going to achieve organic growth. I explained about that. That alone will not uh, bring us 5%. Uh, so we will uh, seek a potential M&A opportunity. And with respect to increasing profitability, uh, we will expand and drive service business. And uh, we will be thorough in reducing costs in China to 2021. Uh, once again, we would uh, like to achieve uh, over 10% adjusted operating income ratio. Uh, as I discussed, a basic strategy. Bill uh, Deng service uh, a business uh, uh, will be expanded uh, through data utilizing maintenance so that we can uh, achieve that growth. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. On top of uh, the uh, presenter, uh, Yoji Takeuchi, General Manager of uh, Global Business Strategy, Planning Division, Building Systems uh, Business Unit, and Hiroyuki Harada, uh, Division Manager of Finance Division of Building Systems Business Unit. These two will join uh, Mrs. Seki. Uh, and please uh, wait for the microphone to be brought and uh, state your name and affiliation before you state your question. Please go ahead. Question. My name is Yasui. I have two questions. Question number one. Well, you said that China market is uh, no longer going to grow. Is it the same with other manufacturers? 
is, uh, I believe uh, it is. Uh, Mitsubishi Electric uh, has uh, announced a number. Uh, the number of uh, END operated uh, uh, per 1,000 people, uh, eight units in Japan, Europe, uh, 10 units. Uh, as of 2015, and China uh, back in 2015 was two units per 1,000 people. So there was room for growth, according to Mitsubishi Electric. Do you have similar numbers on hand, uh, if you could share them with us? Uh, uh, compared to the size of population, I think uh, we're talking about 20% uh, uh, and 50%, uh, 60% being uh, NI demand. Uh, that's pretty high. So isn't there a risk of uh, your business shrinking? Uh, my second question has to do with the impact of standardization elevators. Can they really be standardized, I wonder? Uh, the size of the building is different, the height is different. So to what extent would uh, standardization uh, be impactful, and how will it contribute to profitability, I would like to ask. Answer. Uh, to d address the first uh, question, page five, once again, please. Or rather, 1-4, one slide 1-4, that's page six. Up until fiscal year 2016, there was vertical growth, linear growth. Uh, but since around FI17, competition has become harsh, and uh, the growth curve uh, has uh, slowed. And uh, uh, that's uh, because of uh, competition. Competition is becoming intense, and I think uh, it's affecting everyone in the industry. So 500,000 units, uh, that's 60% uh, of the world demand. A population of China, 1.3 billion, 1.4 billion. With that size of population, why such a rapid growth, uh, one may wonder. Uh, but if you could turn to 2-3, slide 2-3 on the screen, please. I did not give you all the details about this, but uh, real GDP, this line, and construction investments. Uh, taking a look at these uh, lines or graphs, uh, these uh, two are correlated with each other. At least that's been the case historically. And this is the line representing E and the NI market. We look at the correlation. Given this graph, uh, Chinese government is saying that it's going to uh, maintain GDP growth of 67%. That's what they're saying. And construction investments are going to be in line with uh, GDP growth, uh, given that 500,000 units. Although it's a huge number, will it rapidly shrink? I don't think so. I do not believe so. That is our take. That is our view. Well, you talked about numbers issued by Mitsubishi Electric in terms of uh, thinking, uh, thinking uh, or the way to look at the market may vary. So I don't have uh, similar numbers that I can share with you. And second, about cost reduction. Uh, can this be achieved? Can cost reduction uh, be achieved effectively was the gist of the question. If uh, we could uh, see slide 2-9. So on this page, we talk about a deployment of global unified model that's going to happen. So far, Japan's regulation, Japan's clients, for that we had uh, Japanese specification. For China, uh, we have uh, GB specification. There's uh, specification specific uh, to China. And uh, uh, in Asia, uh, there are differing uh, specifications, differing regulations. So it's been difficult for us to come up with a global unified model so far. So for each region, we had uh, different design, different specification. And that is why we have not been able to achieve uh, much cost competitiveness uh, from what I see. But we are drastically changing our thinking. Rather than having country-specific specifications, uh, Japan in particular is shrinking. So what is the fixed part of the regulation that we have to abide by? And what is the variable part? Uh, we started to look at regulation and specification differently. And of course, we cannot have just one single model to respond to all the regulations. But at least the fixed part uh, can be dealt with. Japan, Asia, and China, throughout these uh, countries, uh, we are able to standardize uh, the part that is uh, fixed uh, in terms of requirements. 
and uh, regulation uh, because of ISO standards uh, has uh, become more and more harmonized. Uh, Japan is uh, uh, being aligned uh, toward ISO standards. And so I think uh, given that uh, trend in regulation, I think we're able to respond to some regulation with a globalized unified model. It's going to be challenging, but then by having this, we would like to achieve cost competitiveness. Question. So fixed versus uh, variable, uh, what is the ratio or the split between the two? Well, the image that we have is a fixed uh, part, 60 to 70 percent. 30 percent will have to remain variable, but at least 60 to 70 percent can be fixed. I hope that sufficed. Uh, further questions, please go ahead. Uh, question. Now, regarding uh, the uh, Chinese issue, I would like to ask a question from different uh, uh, perspective. One dash four, I said uh, 500,000 flat uh, was mentioned, uh, but uh, uh, price uh, uh, is declining. If we take that into consideration, um, in terms of uh, value, I think uh, the Chinese market is, uh, uh, is shrinking. Is that the case? A second question is regarding page five. Uh, you talked about uh, uh, increase in revenue and uh, decreasing uh, range in operating income. Waterfall chart is providing prices is declining in China, uh, declining uh, revenues by 30 billion. Uh, but uh, profit uh, is uh, uh, declining only by 9 billion yen. So um, I was I, I thought that uh, profit will decline further with the price decline, uh, but uh, what about the product mix uh, in China? Is that the case, or uh, why is profit uh, not uh, uh, decreasing as much as uh, uh, revenues? Third question uh, is regarding the volatility in terms of uh, um, revenues as well as operating income for the hard. Can you give a breakdown into the hardware, such as uh, elevator and escalators, and service? Uh, I think it's uh, 30 and 70, a breakdown. And uh, which is better in terms of revenues as well as operating income in terms of variability? Answer to your first question. Regarding the Chinese market, uh, competition is becoming fierce, and uh, price uh, decline has been experienced, a market uh, per se. Uh, is not growing significantly. If that is the case for new installations, uh, revenues uh, could decline. I think that was uh, the gist of your question. Uh, regarding new installations, yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, it is true that uh, we, with 500,000, uh, we would like to maintain the share, uh, but the uh, price decline uh, will be experienced. And therefore, for new installations alone, will mean that the revenue increase cannot be expected. That is the reason why uh, we are also focused on increasing revenues for services and uh, exports. Uh, that is how we would like to augment this. Uh, in 2021, uh, 30 billion organic uh, growth uh, has been expected, is being planned. Now, uh, regarding uh, the slower decline in terms of uh, operating income compared to revenue decline, that's your second question. Regarding new installations, it is not growing. Uh, why is profit uh, not uh, going down as much? Was the question. As I explained at the outset, uh, uh, in order to increase operating I income, if price is going to decline, uh, we have to be more cost competitiveness. Uh, there is no other choice. And therefore, in terms of procurement, uh, cost reduction will have to be realized. Uh, manufacturing uh, cost uh, decline, cost reduction will have to be uh, uh, achieved uh, to augment uh, the uh, to offset the loss. Now, regarding your third question, is that limited to China? Let me confirm. Question: I'm talking about the business overall. Now, uh, you said that uh, 603 billion will go down. Uh, is, I thought that the service was increasing in revenue, uh, but uh, what is the breakdown between hardware and soft and uh, uh, services? I'm not going to give you uh, detailed numbers, uh, but 31% uh, uh, is the service uh, uh, revenue. And China, in China, would like to increase, especially for maintenance. That is the strategy we'll be implementing. Therefore, service ratio is going to increase. That is our strategy. Now, I have a follow-up for the second question. Uh, regarding the page that you're showing now, 
uh, price decline uh, in China is 30 billion. Uh, and in the absence of that, uh, that means that uh, 30 billion should uh, be reflected in the operating income. Uh, but uh, operating profit uh, is only limited to uh, 9 billion decline. Uh, cost, uh, the cost reduction is on the right hand side as well. Uh, so, why is this the case? Uh, please uh, elaborate. And so, so, this is where uh, you are referring to, I believe. Now, after orders are received, uh, before sales can be posted, there is a time lag. And last year, for the Chinese price, selling price, a 30 billion drop uh, was experienced. Uh, but uh, the installations have uh, increased in China. The reason being that uh, in fiscal year 2017, uh, sales revenues was very strong. And uh, even with the uh, selling price decline, uh, we were able to proactively capture the increase in the number of units. Uh, and uh, this also included uh, a low selling price products as well. And the revenues here uh, has had an impact. Uh, and re realizing this from the uh, latter half of 2017, uh, we have changed our course uh, in terms of receiving orders uh, reflecting the, the selling price. And uh, there is a time lag, and uh, installations have increased, uh, so that has an impact of 2.5 billion. Uh, but uh, there is a time lag that has to be considered, uh, which is difficult to interpret uh, from this uh, waterfall chart. So maybe it did not sit well for you, but uh, uh, that concludes my explanation. Thank you. Any other questions? Question about uh, India. You said that you would like to set up a new factory in India. Are you able to provide details uh, for that? I would like to ask for that. And uh, setting up a new sales office in Lao, if you could also elaborate on that. In terms of uh, the slide 2-8, uh, slide 2-8, please. Well, actually, with respect to India, in 2008, uh, we set up a sales office, uh, sales space, and uh, a facility uh, to provide a maintenance uh, service. Uh, uh, we've had frontline business. Uh, from Thailand, uh, we have been selling, uh, exporting high-speed elevators uh, to the Indian market. And uh, in that business, I think we've been able to secure some performance and progress, and uh, we are already receiving some maintenance contracts. But uh, not just uh, uh, high-speed elevators, but uh, uh, cheaper uh, volume zone products are also required in India in order to respond to that demand. Uh, the escal elevators, E and E, that's brought uh, from Thailand, is not nearly uh, enough in terms of competitiveness. And so, because of that, last year uh, we uh, came up with uh, this plan to uh, set up a new factory in India. Uh, we are conducting various uh, studies. Uh, we have uh, had some N and A, but uh, as of today, uh, we have not been able to yet set up a new plant, a new factory in India. Uh, but we utilizing, uh, we are utilizing outsourcing companies. Uh, so by the end of uh, fiscal year 2018, once again, uh, I would like uh, to share with you a plan as to what we're going to do in terms of manufacturing in India. So more to come by the end of this year. And Lao, last fiscal year, uh, FI 2017, by the end of that fiscal year, I said that uh, we're going to set up a, a new sales office. Uh, that plan has been somewhat delayed, but Vietnam, Cambodia, and Myanmar, these countries are on track, on plan, with respect to uh, setting up uh, uh, new sales offices. Uh, and so in Asia and Middle East, uh, com uh, compared to 2014, we have been able to receive orders uh, 1.4 times more than uh, 2014. Uh, Lao uh, utilizes uh, Thai bots. So uh, we have a sales company in Thailand uh, that we can leverage. Uh, they're working very closely uh, with us, and it's a matter of time before we can uh, start uh, business uh, uh, up and running in Lao. 
Does that suffice? The four plants in China. What is the production capacity of the four plants in China? And uh, uh, how much export uh, uh, from those uh, plants that you have in mind? Answer, we have not made an announcement on that, but on an annual basis, 70,000 units per annum has been produced by the four plants in China. Production capacity, uh, 80,000. So there's uh, still leeway uh, to increase production. Uh, we are approaching uh, the concluding time. We would like to take one more question before we close the session. Question regarding China uh, services and maintenance business uh, is what I would like to ask a question about. According to your explanation, uh, currently uh, you have to send people uh, physically, and there is a possibility of uh, change going forward. I think that was the point you alluded to. So let me confirm. As a result of this, uh, will the maintenance uh, business uh, uh, profitability, you mentioned that it is not so high now, how is it going to change? And uh, with the automation, similar to the case of Japan, uh, the control uh, information will have to be disclosed. Uh, therefore, uh, third party will be enabled to provide similar services. Uh, is that a correct understanding? Please clarify. Uh, please look at to uh, answer 2-6. Currently, uh, we are providing uh, uh, for the installed uh, uh, EAD, uh, we are providing uh, paid uh, maintenance service, uh, accounting for 50 percent or even uh, less than that. For the Chinese uh, maintenance market, uh, uh, the competition is very high and uh, price uh, is very low. And uh, 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 automated uh, um, services is not uh, uh, prohib permitted. Uh, therefore, two people have, will be have to send a monthly basis. Uh, so competition is very high, and uh, manpower will be required to provide maintenance service in China. Therefore, for maintenance uh, uh, service in China, we do not have a highly profitable business yet. So that's the first point. And as I mentioned earlier, in the Chinese market, uh, a shortage of labor uh, is coming to the fore. And the Chinese government is cognizant of this fact. And uh, with the Chinese uh, Elevator uh, Association, to which our company is a member, uh, is being engaged. Uh, and uh, we are inviting them to come to uh, Japan uh, to look at our system uh, so that we can have them better understand that uh, uh, manpower is not always needed. Uh, so I think it's just a matter of time. And this type of interface uh, is uh, uh, provided with our products. And uh, with the new legislation, uh, the strategy that uh, we have uh, um, uh, set forth with uh, could bear fruit. Now, to your subsequent question, in third party, uh, with the uh, automated uh, maintenance, uh, is there a possibility to enable them to make inroads? I think that was the gist of your question. Obviously, uh, we have uh, a remote uh, um, a monitoring system uh, for many items. Uh, so uh, simple measures could uh, be uh, enabled, but I still believe that uh, we can differentiate ourselves um, against uh, competitors and be successful in China. Uh, question. Uh, currently, the control information uh, does not have to be provided in China yet. Is there a possibility that uh, it will change? Answer. So uh, if we uh, are able to uh, contract uh, with the, um, the automated uh, um, maintenance, uh, then a server uh, connectivity will allow information to come to our servers. But uh, if a company is outside uh, would want to do this uh, on their own, uh, they will uh, install a device uh, to access the control information. Uh, 
but uh, uh, product development uh, uh, is uh, uh, at the at the time product development uh, detailed data is enabled so i think we can be more uh, refined in that regard with this would like to bring this session to a close thank you very much